So I am Dr. Yavad Hussain, one man, professor of pathology, department of pathology, firms, Yorkshire. Uh, we already discussed previously uh, lectures on the disease of the blood vessels and also the disease related to the heart diseases. So today we discuss with the topic related to the disease of the blood vessels. So now, <coughs> initially, some of the pathological changes. Initially, we uh, discussed that the normal histology of the blood vessel wall, we comprising a normal blood vessel wall. Strategically, we can have the three layers. Number one, then the innermost intima layer, tunica intima. And the medial layer, called as the tunica media. And outer layer, and the serosal layer, or adventitial layer. Tunica adventitia. So, some of the pathological changes they can occur within the vessel women, they can produce some pathological changes uh, <coughs> with the blood vessels, and they also have I mean, there some uh, pathological consequences. If there is a the, uh, narrowing of the narrowing and the <coughs> some the obstruction of the blood vessel wall, and they also can be caused by the cellulite producing the by the atherosclerosis. And also by the atherosclerosis slowly or specifically by formation of the thrombosis. So they will also can cause the restricting the blood flow in the downstream tissues. So another pathological change, uh, they are called as a restricting uh, blood flow. They will also can be caused by the tissue atrophy and by the infarction. So they also can cause by the uh, can lead to the <coughs> can lead to the some there they uh, depend upon the severity of the uh, severity of the occlusion or the restriction of the blood flow uh, within the vessel wall. So this, these are the another condition that are called the restricting of the blood flow. So and a third form is a weakening of the blood vessel wall movement. They also can be caused by the dilatation or the dissection or the rupture of the blood vessel wall. They will also can be caused. Uh, caused by the some there the formation of the thrombosis and by embolization and within the vessel uh, they are still restricting the blood flow within the downstream tissue. So they are the some pathological changes and they will also can cause by the some uh, injury in the vessel wall injury. They also can cause development of the inflammatory condition or also the development of atherosclerosis or development or development of the hypertension. And some of the disease also can occur within the veins and the nerves, which also can call the uh, lymphatics. So, <coughs> the, today we discuss the topic related to the uh, vasculitis. Before we also can be starting, there is the uh, vasculitis, inflammatory condition of the vessel lumen. So, before we starting the vasculitis, uh, we discuss the pregnatal uh, anomalies related to the. <coughs> Uh, vessel wall. Number one, there is the buried aneurysm. So it is also outpouching of the. It is also a condition that outpouching between the cerebral uh, vessel, cerebral blood vessels, and they will also can occur and due to the. And they also can occur due to the perinatal uh, weakening, and within the vessel wall, they also can producing the some there the hemorrhage within the cerebral vessels. So they also can call the buried aneurysm. So they also depend upon the some anatomical location. So another one, there is the arteriovenous fistula formation. Arteriovenous fistula formation, so it is also a normal communication between the arteries and the veins. Arteries of the veins, so it is also can be, uh, <coughs> it may be uh, due to the some there is the congenital or by the some there is maybe due to the some secondary, uh, secondary causes. And they will also can be caused by the trauma, some they are caused by the surgery, surgical irradiation, inflammation, and or by the some there the uh, development of the hem, uh, they also can be caused there the yield uh, ruptured aneurysms. So they also can be these are the some uh, causes they also can be causing the arterial venous fistula formation. Uh, fistulas and may also can become uh, larger uh, giant fistulas, and they will also can be. Uh, 
and creating uh, they also can creating the left right shunting of the blood and they will also can leading to the uh, some the high cardiac output failure so this is another uh, kind of anomaly related with the arterial venous fistulas there is abnormal communication between the arteries and the and the veins and they will also can be caused by the congenital or by some secondary uh, causes and within the vessel lumen wall they can can producing by the some the surgery inflammation radiation and traumas and also the some the rupture heel rupture aneurysm so and third one is a uh, there be uh, some third one condition of the can anomaly related with this vessel wall and fibromuscular dysplasia so it is also a focal regular focal irregular uh, thickening of the thickening of the uh, most probably there is the uh, art thickening of the arterial wall and also can occur and due to the arterial wall and they also can be caused and due to the induces and they also can be caused by the So they are also caused by the antiviral and the middle hyperplasia. They are also caused by the within and the hyperplasia condition and within this layer. So it is a focal irregular thickening of the thickening of the arterial wall. They are also caused by the antiviral and the medial and they are also caused by the medial hyperplasia. So these are the condition as some condition they are related with the kind of anomaly within the vessel lumen. So now we are going to be uh, discussing some of the normal uh, histological cells within the of the normal cell. They line the blood vessel wall. Number one, they are the endothelial cells, and the normal uh, lining cells of the blood vessel. Another one, they are the smooth muscle cell. They are also having the vascular smooth muscle cells. But they are also present in the vessel lumen wall. Third one is the extra muscle. Uh, they are the extra cellular matrix. They are kind of tissue protein. They are also present over here. There are three types of blood vessels: larger size, medium size, and the smaller size. Okay. So now we are discussing with the some of the injury within the layer, intimal layer, or the medial layer, or some of the uh, conditions. We already uh, discussed later on the arteriosclerosis, atherosclerosis, Munkberg calcificus sclerosis. So there are arterial sclerosis. So there are the, some conditions, and they will also can be uh, discussed. Uh, previously, in the chapter of in the topic of the arterial process. So now today we are discussing with the some there the uh, pathological changes within this layer. They also can produce in some abnormalities. Now, uh, now now come on to the topic, and there are also uh, most important topic. There is the vasculitis, and also the uh, we also been discussing uh, before. So these are the some topics related to the uh, vessel, blood vessel diseases. Number one, there are the uh, most probably arteriosclerosis, atherosclerosis, and also the hypertension, and also the some there also having there the vasculitis and uh, disease of the lymph and uh, vein, uh, veins, and also the tumor of blood vessel. So these are the contents of the also can be discussed. discussed. So our uh, three topics that are remaining there. Number one, there is the inflammatory condition of the vessel wall, vasculitis, and next one is uh, we are also discussing the disease of the lymph and the uh, lymph vessels and the veins, and third one, the tumor of the blood vessels. So today we are discussing with the topic related to the inflammatory condition of the vessel wall or vessel lumen. So these are some of the uh, now come on to the topic. Uh, there is the uh, there is vasculitis. Vasculitis is also an inflammation of the uh, vessel lumen wall. Uh, so they also can be caused by the a uh, lot of causes. There are also the two types. Number one, there are the infectious type. And another one of the non-infectious are the immunological mediated. So, infectious type they will also can be caused by the uh, lot of viruses, either the bacteria, 
viruses and fungi and also the some deadly sporocytes and the clamida rickettsia and also the other cause of microbial tuberculosis so these are the hepatic infections so they are a list of the uh, causes they also can be contributing in the pathogenesis of the in the infectious type of the vasculitis so uh, another one there is the immunological mediated immunological type so this is also a, a two types of the number one and there are the two patterns there are the two uh, most important most common uh, there are the patterns they are also can be known as number one there is the infectious type and also the immunological mediated so now they are also having their the infectious type and the immune mediated uh, So there are the two uh, most important types of the vasculitis. So there are certain other causes like uh, the physical and the chemical, like uh, the traumas and their radiation and toxins and microbes. They will also can be contributing in the pathogenesis of the both. So now vasculitis a uh, definition by definition vasculitis it is also an inflammation of the blood vessel wall. So the symptoms and they are related are uh, referable uh, to the uh, most probably the ischemia. and that also can be ischemia that also can be occurs in the there are there also can occur in the downstream uh, downstream tissues and there also can be caused by the most probably due to the thrombosis okay so there also can be caused by the some there the uh, in the injury within the vessel wall and by formation of the thrombosis so these are the some uh, symptoms they also can be caused by the some there is the vessel wall injury and formation of the thrombosis within the vessel lumen wall and they are and, and some symptoms and they are the some constitutional symptoms like uh, the fever myalgia they are also heavy there the myalgia and arthralgia myalgia and there is the uh, malaise and also the weight loss so these are the some uh, arthralgia so these are the some constitutional symptoms and they also can occurring non specific type they also can occur in this a uh, case so some other systemic symptoms and they will also can depending upon the involvement of the tissue body so we also will discuss later on in each type so they are also having there the uh, most importantly uh, two uh, patterns they also can be uh, number one there the inflammatory or the infectious type another one their immune mediated or the non infectious type so in this uh, we are also developing the any vessel can also be involved and uh, any vessel can be involved and but depend upon the size uh, depend upon the size they are also having the repetition and for the uh, different force of the disease so now vasculitis vasculitis and they are classified and according to the on the basis of the uh, vessel size vascular size site and there are the uh, lee histology and also the clinical manifestations and the pathogenesis so there are the two patterns we already discussed here infectious type and the non infectious type non infectious type are the most of two patterns two mechanisms number one there are the immunological mediated uh, mediated and there are the inflammatory condition and also inflammation and also the non infectious type so some physical and the chemical uh, factors they also can be uh, contributing in the pathogenesis like uh, the radiation toxins and the trauma surgery so these are also can be uh, contributing a factor in the pathogenesis of the both types of the of the vasculitis now uh, some there are also having there the uh, most probably the non infectious type non infectious type and there the immune mediated immune complex uh, immune complex associated uh, vascular deposition uh, vascular vascular there also can be a uh, vasculitis and there also can be caused by the uh, vascular deposition of the circulating uh, antigen antibody complexes complexes and they will also can be for example a uh, dna anti dna and they will also can be a uh, uh, present complexes they also can present in case of the systemic lupus erythematosus it is also multi systemic autoimmune diseases like this so in these cases and they will also can be presenting some there is circulating antibodies 
uh, in the different type of the vasculitis. Okay, some tell the vascular injury and there are also the vascular injury and uh, there are also arises and from the from an act from an uh, most probably that activation and uh, active activation and or by the uh, the recruitment of the uh, uh, the recruitment of the FC uh, cells the FC bearing cells types so this is also some uh, pathogenesis or some the pathogenic uh, uh, immunologic immediate pathogenesis contributing in the pathology of the uh, disease uh, of the of the vascular uh, in the different type of vasculitis now now come out of the topic as uh, some there the presence of the uh, presence of the some uh, group of the autoantibodies so it is also a anti most probably there the uh, anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies and they will also can be presenting in the different type of the vasculitis so before we starting that autoantibody we can classify the vasculitis depend upon the size of blood vessel so size of blood vessels initially we also can be uh, later on so uh, one by one so this is also uh, called as a first the larger size blood vessel large size vasculitis you can then uh, also can be classified number one there is the giant cell or the temple arteritis another one so this is also a larger blood vessel also can involve within the trachea's arteritis so and in this third one is a very medium size of the artery uh, medium size blood vessel involved or the intermediate vasculitis they also can be grouped as a poly arteritis nodosa and third one is a uh, they are also having their the kawasaki disease and also there the microscopic polyangiitis so these are the some uh, three types they also can be contributing and within the medium size a blood vessel wall type of the vasculitis so they are the occur within the medium size blood vessel third one is the <coughs> third group is the largest size blood vessel wall so sorry there is smaller size smaller size blood vessel uh, they also can be group as the number one there is the trunk straw syndrome and also the second one is the vigorous glomerulosis and third one is the there is the uh, thrombangiitis obliquen so these are also uh, called as the burger disease so they are the this is a classification they also can be divided on the basis of the vessel size size uh, previously we also can discussing a uh, uh, giant cell arteritis so they are the, uh, this is the giant cell arteritis and trachea's arteritis and they also can be grouped in the large size blood vessel and uh, then there are the polyarteritis nodosa and also there is the kawasaki disease and third one is the microscopic polyangiitis and they also can be grouped into the they also can be grouped into the <coughs> medium sized blood vessel vasculitis and third group smaller sized blood vessel vessel vasculitis they also can be a group as the cerebrospinal syndrome vigorous glomerulosis and third one is the thrombangiitis obliquen or the budget disease so they are the three types of the uh of the vasculitis and they will also can be occurring in the in this case now we discussed the letter uh, on now the anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody it is also a, a most probably anti neutrophil cytoplasmic set of antibodies it is a group of the heterogeneous group of autoantibodies and they are directed uh, they are also can be uh, directed and against the constituents against the constituents of the it is a constituents of the neutrophils and most neutrophils and uh, genus and also the genus and the monocytes and the lysosomes and the few cells so these are the autoantibody body that also can be present in the different type of vasculitis number one there are the anti uh, myeloperoxidase uh, anti neutrophil cytoantibodies which is also uh, directed against the 
classes on uh, peroxid most probably there is a so this also can be present in the two types number one chilogus fast syndrome and also the microscopic meningitis they will also can be present in the for the diagnosis to have a case of the of the chilogus fast syndrome and also the microscopic meningitis another one and there is also a anti-protein s3 antibodies which is also present in and in the it is also can be presenting in the vagus pneumatosis so there also can be a diagnosis for diagnosis of the vagus pneumatosis and third one is a there is anti endothelial anti antibodies anti endothelial cell antibodies and they are the diagnostic tool for the Kawasaki disease so these are the a group of the epigenetic uh, group of the antibodies and they also can be uh, helpful for the diagnosis of case of the different type of the immunal mediated vasculitis so they also can be discussing now we are uh, discussing uh, one by one number one that the giant cell arthritis giant cell are the temporal arthritis so uh, this is the most common form of the arthritis of the vascular vasculitis they also can occur within the united states of america and elderly people and they are the more commonly affected so it is characterized by the that also can be characterized by the focal glomerulus inflammation there are so focal glomerulus inflammation of the focal glomerular inflammation of the uh, there are so having the medium to the largest size blood vessels in this condition in this type of the vasculitis they are chiefly uh, involved vessels and they are the uh, larger arteries larger vessels and there are the most probably the kidney vessels that also can be involved the most commonly temporal artery they are most commonly affected so it also can be it also can be involved in the aorta they are called as the giant arteritis or the giant cell arteritis so aorta ko involve karti hai to they also can be called the giant cell arteritis now it also can be the primary uh, etiology it is also the primary etiology it also can be a locally and it is a t cell uh, mediated uh, mediated there also can be immunological response and to also a vessel wall it's probably vessel wall there is a the vessel vessel wall <coughs> injury so there also can be have some there is the vessel wall and the things present over here so this is also pathogenesis of the case of the giant cell in this type the most commonly temporal artery or the aorta may also can be involved be involved in. so they also can occur in the larger to medium size artery most commonly affected now morphological changes also can occur within this so there is the glioma glioma that is inflammation vasculitis inflammation and there is the elastic elastic tissue uh, most probably elastic tissue fragmentation Plastic fragmentation, fragmentation, and then the multi-nuclear giant cells that are also can be present in the they also can be seen in the 50% of the cases. Most are the 50 to 75% of the cases. Some there the in this type there is the intertibial fibros fibrosis, and we see that the medial scarring, and also along with the there is the intimal. Uh, there are some changes also can occur in the causing the intimal narrowing. Some the changes in the intimal and the uh, medial layer and of the larger arteries. Okay. Some there the the diagnostic tool for this case we take a biopsy. Biopsy is also a negative in the one third of the cases because of the this is also a focal uh, lien. Now what are the clinical manifestation of the temporal arthritis? Temporal arthritis is also typically. They are also going to manifest and with the uh, uh, symptoms of the uh, headache and also the some uh, facial pain. So the other non-specific symptoms and they are also going to be uh, are, uh, fever, including fever and arthralgias and also the uh, flu-like symptoms like the fever and the weight loss and the fatigue. So these are some uh, symptoms. They are also going to be along with uh, temporal arthritis and cancer arthritis. In this case, some of the systemic uh, symptoms they are also can be involved ophthalmic artery and they are also can be involved in the most of the patients 
most of patient often being are also come in about the symptoms and they are also can be appear abruptly in the 50% of the cases in these patients and they will also can be involvement of the ophthalmic artery so they also can causing the permanent and then they can causing the permanent blindness in these case patients so in these cases they also can be causing and there the uh, some with this treatment and there also can be uh, given in this there also a permanent blindness in these cases of the temporal arthritis the disease they also can be responsive and with the steroid therapy so in the giant cell arthritis most probably there the temporal rt or some other the an ophthalmic uh, rt also in uh, this is also involved they also can cause a permanent uh, blindness and some other the neurological symptoms a uh, pain facial pain also the headache there's a most constituent symptoms and along with the flu symptoms like the myalgia or fluidia and some the fever and the weight loss so now another type uh, called as the takayas arthritis it is a large blood vessel arthritis so this is also a, a glomerulus vasculitis of the medium to large size arteries large size arteries so it is also characterized by the it is also characterized by the uh, transmural uh, fibrous uh, transfiber uh, most probably fibrous thickening of the fibrous thickening of the most probably that's going to be uh, transmural fibrous uh, thickening of the thickening of the most probably the aortic arch aortic arch and also the some there is virtual obliteration or the in virtual obliteration of the some there is great provisions uh, they also can uh, producing some uh, there is the changes that also can occur within the great vessel wall so some there is the morphological changes morphology that also can occur in these cases there is the uh, grossly some there also having there is the there is also uh, there is uh, also can be There is irregular, most probably there is irregular aortic uh, thickening, and along with the, and along with the most probably there is also intimal hyperplasia. So there is also can be caused by some there is, and there is also a thickening there is also due to the some formation of hyperplasia of the intimal. So now, the microscopic changes there are also having there is early stages, and there are also some changes there are also can showing. Early changes that also can show the some there the adventitial, uh, inflamed monocular, adventitial, very vascular, monocular from the cell infiltrate, and the later stages and they will also can be causing and some there are the acellular and there are the intimal fat intimal thickening. So they also can uh, produce some changes within the in early stages. They are also can produce also the some there the uh, peri nuclear or peri vascular. Uh, monocular film cell infiltrate and later stages followed by the later stages that they are also performing there is also having the way uh, <coughs> in the malar in the malar thickening so they also can produce some the changes that also can occur within the, this type of the in this case the clinical manifestation they are like the non symptoms like the fever and the, the fever weight loss and also the some there is the flu like symptoms and the some systemic uh, symptoms like the ocular and the neurological Symptoms they are also contributing, including there the weakness of the upper extremities, and they are also called as a uh, named as the pulseless disease. So in these cases, uh, most probably there is also uh, in most of the cases, most of the cases patients they are also developing the hypertension is also uh, more commonly present in these cases. Now third one the polyarthritis nodes, polyarthritis that is also a systemic disorder, vasculitis. Regular vasculitis and they also can occur in the uh, medium to large size arteries, uh, in which the elderly people they are also can be affecting more here. This is also in this disease they are also having the systemic disorder, the multi-systemic involvement in which there the kidney they are also can be uh, medium to small size kidney involvement, liver and also the and they also can the heart and they also can uh, just enter central they also can be involved in these cases. So. there in this cases immuno there the immune complex deposition the also can uh, immune complex deposition the also can occur and within the 
one third of the cases of the chronic hepatitis B suffered in the gene in the 30 percent of the cases. So it's also pathogenesis that's also associated with the hepatitis B virus infection. So some of the uh, clinical manifestation of the of the polyatrous nodosa, the uh, poly nodosa, they also can be largely they are so uh, it is also diseases of the ill, uh, young people, uh, young people, and also can be the uh, non-specific uh, symptoms, most probably symptoms fever, and also the they the, the also uh, most probably the, the malis and arthritis and uh, weight loss. So other symptoms, system systems, and there are so many manifestation involvement of the there are so a kidney involvement there the most probably there the uh, hematuria and then the albinuria and also the some features of the and the hypertension so these are the some uh, kidney manifestation there also can be including in the it also can be involved in the in these cases so then kidney manifestation now And the Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease and third, this is also a, a medium to small size renal vessel involvement. So this is also an acute uh, febrile, uh, usually self-limiting disease that also can occur in the children, infants and the children. So it is also associated and with a medium to small size, uh, sometimes larger blood vessels that also can be involved. Okay, so uh, in this cases, the etiology it is also a T cell uh, hepatitis uh, reaction or the response to the and yet an identified antigen. So this is also some of the and uh, some of the pathogenesis related to the T cell hepatitis reaction and to a yet unidentified antigen. So some of the morphology changes also can occur within this case lesions and they are similar to the bullet and rotosa, uh, but most probably resembling the they are so called including uh, some there is the uh, mucocutinous uh, lymph node syndrome. They are so called other non specific uh, symptoms like the fever, arthralgia, and myalgia, and also the nephrenopathies and uh, skin rashes. Skin rashes, and also the some there is the uh, presence of the skin rashes and uh, oral or the congenital edemas. So, you know, they are so can be seen in this case. So this is a giant cell arthritis and they also can form the focal glomerular vasculitis and also this is also a type of use arthritis. So that one is polyarthritis and fourth one is the Kawasaki disease. So they also can show you and they are also having the lesions that also are presenting in the oral and also the oral conjectival uh, edemas and also some there is a conjectival edemas present over here. Skin issues. So these are the some feature clinical uh, manifestation for diagnosis of case of the Kawasaki diseases. So this in this condition, there are showing there is some presence of the autoantibodies and there are the uh, anti-endothelial three anti-endothelial cell antibodies that are present in this case. So this, these patients and they are also having their, uh, some involvement of the, uh, it is also, also affecting and they are also having their, the formation of the, they are also having uh, forming aneurysm formation, they are also leading to the myocardial infarction in these cases. So their aspirin and also the, and they are the intravenous immunoglobulins and they are also can give in and for the loose risk are the preventing from the remedial. So this, these are also some clinical features and also the diagnostic tool and further in case of the Kawasaki disease. Now we can discussing there the microscopic polyangiitis. So this is also a necrotizing as necrotizing vasculitis and they also can be vessel disease. They also can be involving the vessels and the most probably smaller than uh, smaller size blood vessels. Including arteries, capillaries, and the venules, and 
they are the smaller and then those are the fully arteries. In some cases, and most probably, it is also uh, an uh, antibody. In some cases, the antibody uh, response to the antibody response to the uh, some uh, drugs and then the microbes and all the some there is a tumor protein, tumor protein, and they will also can be occurring in the in the lymphoprotein disorders. So these are some uh, immunological uh, pathogenesis and for case of the microspolyates, this disease also can include involving the smaller uh, vessel like the arterial and the venules and the capillaries. So now in these cases and there is also a typically as uh, typically it was for fibular necrosis, fibular necro necrosis and the vessel wall and the the symptoms like the most probably like the polyatal sclerosis some there is a patient they are uh, developing some there the in the morphological changes some the morphological changes and they also can present as the some the inflammatory cell infected and uh, within the there is also a fragmented presence of the fragmented microfilic nuclear and there also can be with and, and within the within and around the brain vessel. So this is also a mark for microscopic feature and for the diagnosis of the microscopic fully injectors. So we also can be seen in this uh, so there's also microscopic fully injectors so we also can be seen there the some there the uh, nuclear there the uh, neutrophilic, uh, there the nuclear, they are also going to occur in the periphery. So they are also going to be uh, surrounding uh, within and around the vessel wall. Okay, so this is also a microscopic feature of the uh, necrosis of the microscopic polyangitis. In this case, and there are also a pulmonary capillaries, and also uh, most probably, and particularly, they are also going to be presenting over here. So, the, the little or the low immunological, uh, most probably, the immunoglobin is also going to be <coughs> the position, uh, immunoglobin is also going to be the position, they are also going to be occurring and uh, using the vessel. So, in these cases, and they are also having the presence of the pulmonary capillaries and uh, in these cases, now we are going to another feature, another uh, some of the clinical feature of these cases. So the clinical manifestation are the consequences, and they are the similar to the. Uh, they are also can be like the polynodosa and but some of the flu like symptoms like the fever, arthralgia, myalgia, and they will also can be uh, occurring in these cases, including and they are also having their way. Most probably there will be hemoplasis or the involvement of the lung system system that is the hemoplasis involvement of the lung and then the uh, hematuria involvement of the kidneys and also the some that the proteinuria and also the involvement of the kidneys there will be purpura for the involvement of the skin and preparations and there also will be the bowel pain and also the very involvement of the cell tract in these cases the treatment the cyclos, uh, most probably the cyclosporins and uh, and steroids and they are going to give it and for the uh, prevention from the remission and the the risk. In these cases, there are the uh, anti myeloproxidase the antibody that are going to be uh, diagnostic and uh, tool for the diagnosis of the microscopic injuries. Now, so uh, another disease and this is a small side blood vessel that the cherub straw syndrome. Stroke syndrome, and this is also a small size, a small blood vessel size, vasculitis. This is also a, called the necrotizing, and most probably it is also called the allergic genoma, genomatosis, and also the angitis in the two forms. So, this condition it is also involvement within the small blood vessels called the small blood vessel vasculitis, and uh, also. Small blood vessel necrotizing, and there also can be nec necrotizing vasculitis, and uh, there also can be associated and with uh, asthma, allergic rhinitis, and peripheral 
eosinophilia. In these cases, and there are some in presence of the uh, peripheral eosinophilia and also the peripheral eosinophilia and also the <coughs> allergic rhinitis anastoma in these patients. So, in this case, and there the anti cytoplasmic antibodies, and they will also then be uh, diagnostic and tool and for the diagnostic tool, the anti myeloproxidase uh, anti antibodies are also to be diagnostic in this case in the 50% of cases. Now, muscular lesions and they will also can be uh, probably there are also going to be zippling and all the more polyatid nodosa like the flu like symptoms and but they are also heavy there they some characteristically they are also heavy there they uh, accompanied and with it there the eosinophils inflammatory infiltrate and also along with the guloma formations the two most important uh, there is some changes that's going to occur painful eosinophilia and along with the geloma, geloma formations. The, in this case, there are the eosinophilic inflammatory cell infiltrate, they are so often occurring and they are so can be uh, causing inflammatory, they are so implicated and for the development of the uh, eosinophilic cardiomyopathies in some patients. Now, there are two can be some there, the uh, cardiac involvement and most probably there are so, this also can be occur for development of the cardiomyopathies in these cases, cardiostral syndrome. So now, another condition, there's weakness, chemomatosis, there are also uh, uh, small to medium-sized blood vessel vasculitis, and also necrotizing vasculitis, it is a trade of necrotizing uh, geloma for chemomatosis, and also the, of the small to medium-sized arteries, and also some that's a necrotizing, uh, there's the, Necrotizing and most probably the genome, uh, genome formation, and there's only the up the upper airways, and then the necrotizing, ne ne necrotizing is most probably the uh, genome formation, genomatosis of the upper and the lower airways involvement, respiratory tract, and there's the genome nephritis. There are three main features, they also can be occur in the way genomatosis. Number one, there's a necrotizing uh, genomas uh, of the upper airways, and next one is a then the necrotizing geloma of upper and airways of the both involvement, and then the necrotizing geloma nephritis. So it's also a trait of the of the various gelomatosis involvement of the small size blood vessel. Okay, so in these cases, a T cell immediate response and T cell immediate response to the upper sensitivity and also can be. Is also uh, most probably there is also an inhaled antigen. A T cell have a reaction to the inhaled antigen, and that's what can be contributed in the pathogenesis of the vagus gelomatosis. Now, in these cases, the vagus gelomatosis, which type of autoimmune body, there are so many there are the anti protein S3, anti neutrophil cytopro antibody, they are presenting in these cases. Now, some of the morphological features in which they are also in the gelomatous inflammation, geloma formation, that's what can occur, and within so geographical distribution. So, some of the geloma formations and may also can be uh, coolies and to also conform the nodules, which, which will be the cavitate. So, some of the involvement of the renal alien, they are also contributing there, they are the other, uh, it's probably as they, they are very from the focal segmental. Uh, focal segmental uh, in the nephritis and to the proliferative uh, or the kissing formation that's what can be occurring in these cases. Proliferative genome nephritis or kissing genome nephritis. So these are the some uh, diagnostic feature for the kilometers for the vagus gelomatosis. And then what are the clinical uh, features of the vagus gelomatosis? Some of the uh, means and they are the affected older than and then that of the <coughs> Okay, older than the 40 years of age. In these cases, some there is some uh, symptoms like uh, the some related with the chlorinephritis. Now, the uh, last one there is the thrombangitis obliterans. So this is also a 
most probably this is also a lean is a type typically the asu can be uh, present in the uh, heavy smokers and young uh, younger adults they also can be affected younger than the 35 years of age so in this cases so this is also a most probably there's a segmental and the segmental thrombosing acute and chronic inflammatory uh, response they also can occur within the veins and the uh, small cell blood vessels it's also a t-cell mediated response t-cell mediated response to the, to the uh, most smoke antigen smoke antigen they also can implicate in the pathogenesis of the thrombogenic obliterant albagy resistance you can, can become, occur in cigarette smoker trapped colitis now to so some of the morphological changes in acute lesions and there are two lesions and they also can be including and there's the acute inflammatory infiltrate and along with the mural thrombosis mural, mural, mural thromba and they also can be uh, containing micro abscesses and they also can be followed by the that is some of the giant cell formations in these cases now some of the clinical feature they also can occur within this and they also have the not phenomena like alcohol sensation and like lodications and also the some of the uh, so these care patients and also can be uh, prevented from the some smokes so these are some clinical feature now we also can be uh, uh, we can see uh, there's a one by one this is also a, a microscopic and along the growth features of the giant cell or the temporal uh, arthritis and that's what having there the uh, focal glomerulus response and in, within the micro within the cell wall that's what can find there the antimal and medial middle vessel fibrosis okay so this is also a case of the uh, microscopic and the and growth features of the trachias arthritis and then with the large blood vessels also can be involved in which there is the also a large um, IOT cards they also can be blood vessels also can be involved they also can see as a fragmented uh, focal uh, fragmented uh, fragmental intimal thickening <coughs> now in third layer they are showing that they are uh, some changes they also can occur in the fully altered sodosal also can be uh, in these cases some they are also having the inflammatory response in the vessel lumen wall. So this is also a microscopic and gross feature of the polar neurosa. So now this is also a microscopic feature of the microscopic polyneuritis. And you also can see there's a neutrophilic uh, leukocytoplastic dusting in the in the in the within and outer in the outer layer of the vessel wall. Now so this is also a disease of the Kawasaki disease. You can see the or uh, the cross picture, there the skin area mass, sclerosis, and also the conjunctival and oral lesions, and within there is also the lymphadenopathy. So these are the, some diagnostic features for case of the Kawasaki disease. Now this is also a okay. So my, this is also case, and we also can see there is a thyroidistro uh, syndrome, and along with the involvement of the upper airways and the lower airways and also the gilom nephritis in these cases formation of the gilom necrotizing gilom inflammation within the vessel wall so it's also vigorous gilomatosis to the triad of the and also I mean there the uh, sorry this is also a, now this is a condition through amplitude and this is also can seen within the leg and there is also a numbness and the leg radiation and also there is a renal phenomena cold sensation within the extremities and there also are also of the leg. The lower extremities are more commonly affected. In this case, this is also going to occur in the heavy smokers. And that's also can be caused by the T cell of the response to the smoke antigen. And that's also can induce in and this type of the uh, changes within the vessel door. So in which there are the veins and the nerves, they also can be often affected. So well, this is all of about the uh, disease of the blood vessel. So there also can be vasculitis. Initially, we can discussing uh, discussed. Uh, there are also having there be some renal anomalies, and along with the some there are the uh, vasculitis, and also the some there the types of the vasculitis. And according to the site and the size of blood vessel, large size, medium size, and the smaller size, there also can be categorized different types of vasculitis in the three groups. 
and there are two types most importantly infectious type and non infectious called the immunological immediate threat so larger size there are the giant sinus arthritis tuberculosis arthritis and then the medium size there are the poliarthritis sclerosis and next one is the kawasaki disease and microspolyarthritis and then after small size there are venous glomerulosis tuberculosis straw syndrome and thrombosis abrupt so so today is all of about the uh, traffic related in the vasculitis inflammation of the of the vasculitis and uh, some of the changes also can occur within the vessel leaving wall okay so in next lecture we also can be uh, taking the class on that and the topic related to the disease of the uh, lymph vessels and the veins okay thank you very much अच्छा भी जी क्वेश्चन है सर ओके जी क्वेश्चन है सर अनमिट के अनमिट के हां चलो चलो सुनता है हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम हेलो हेलो बेटा आवाज सुन रहा है सर जी बेटा हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम यस सर समझ में आ गया आगे बेटा बेटा अभी टॉपिक है वो वेस्कुलरिटिस मैंने पढ़ाया आपको पूरा ठीक है डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ वेस्कुलरिटिस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द बेसिस साइज ओके लार्जेस्ट साइज मीडियम साइज एंड स्मॉल साइज वी आर टू कैन बी शोइंग द डिफरेंट फीचर्स ओके बेटा यू वन सो any question but up please next class beta we are going to be ji laiye ne pakhand bhi hoti hello assalam alaikum bhaiya beta okay any question beta please sir we will take inshallah our next lecture on the wednesday inshallah later on okay thank you beta okay थैंक यू सर थैंक यू अल्लाह हाफिज खुदा हाफिज